I'm Kyle. Um, we were, like Will said, acquired by SU uh, in March. And what we do is we build on common products and partnerships. So there's two things that SU does very, very well, and it was a natural, natural marriage. We've spent a lot of time working with SU, both as a client, when I worked at Lowe's, where we built all kinds of weird things, like 3D printers, helped put a 3D printer in space, built autonomous robots, VR, AR, all kinds of things through our partnerships with SU. So we're super excited to be here. And, uh, but as we were building all these things and doing them inside of large organizations and continue to after I left, you know, it doesn't matter what exponential technology you're working with, there's one universal constant. And that universal constant is people having to make decisions. That is the universal thing. And if anything gets in the way of this exponential future, it's our inability to be able to measure what works or what doesn't, and then to be able to make judicious, fast, insightful insights into that very quickly. And so much of it is us either using new, new, using new technology or even worse, making decisions. And so I have a behavioral science background. And when I was at Lowe's, I really started to use and experiment with a whole bunch of behavioral economics things, which I won't go into now. But the one thing that worked universally well, whether I was testing a product or running an, a, a board meeting or a management meeting, was your brain. So what we would do is we put EEG headsets and eye tracking goggles on people, and we could see what was going on behind the curtain. And what people were saying and what they were thinking didn't always match up. And not because they were lying, but because the systems are different. What we say and what we think are different. What I was trying to really understand is what drives behavior, not necessarily just what people say. So we developed a whole system around this, and, and that's what we call the le uh, neuroscience for leadership, and specifically applied neuroscience. So when we're measuring this with ER EEG, we're able to measure attention, memory activation, Cognitive load, which is probably the most critical one. So when you think about thinking, you don't want to be overwhelmed. You don't want to be underwhelmed. You just want to be, that's right, whelmed. Perfect state of whelmment. You know, Stephen Kotler might call this the, the flow. I'll just call it whelmment. And anxiety and arousal. And if you can measure all those things in the cacophony that's us, then you can understand what's working or not working and then make modifications that are almost imperceptible to the person, but then ladder up to, ah, oh, this makes sense. This is intuitive for me. And that new level of understanding allows you to do all kinds of amazing things. Okay. So this is really how it works. This is our new headset. And it's a dry headset for your neuroscientists out there. And what it allows you to do, as you can see here, it allows you to have this passive way of understanding what's working and not working in real time. And then we can lay that out, whatever the experience was, if you're unpackaging a box, if you're on a UX, UI, or if you're in a board meeting, and to see where things are falling off the rails and also when things are good and engaged. So you can replicate the things that are good and minimize the things that are bad. And you can do it in a quantitative way, which then puts the conversation into a fact-based, quantitative conversation rather than my idea versus your idea, which that alone is a huge level up. So let me give you a practical example. So has anyone heard of Funco before? All right. Or you may have some of these, uh, some of these products. So Funko is a client of ours, and Molly Hartney is a true uncommon partner. She's, she's, a, she's a good friend and an amazing leader. She's a CMO and SVP of digital there. And Funko is a fandom company. Now, there's not really a fandom category um, in business school. But she and her team, they've really championed this whole idea of fandom. It was really, really hard for retailers to understand what this meant, because there's not a shelf set for fandom, typically and also for Wall Street as well. And so she hired us to basically lay out inside of a shelf of a large retailer, which I can't name, uh, to be able to understand what was working and not working in that shelf so that then we could give those insights back to the retailer. And that was a really important tool for them. So really, but what it really was, was what does it really mean to shop fandom? How do you take these different products and these different things that seem not terribly tied together? And what does that really mean for fandom? And so what we did was we had people unbox their, their, their products and see the experience from getting a new thing, what the character was, what they cared about, the feeling of opening up the box, and we could measure exactly what was working and not working. Then we were also, this is not an actual shelf because I can't show the retailer, but we were also able to use eye tracking to see where they were looking and then the course 
of the vision through the shop to see where they were looking and looking before they actually picked up or didn't pick up something and what was going on in their head. And all of those things together then created a massive amount of quantitative insight that allowed them to be able to go back to this retailer, which ultimately landed to they were able to acquire far more floor space in this big box retailer. Huge, huge thing. And then they were able to understand, too, this retailer was able to get and see the quantitative impact of fandom, something that's very ethereal, but has a massive impact in behavior. And so many, of what, so many of the things that we do, the biggest impact to what we're trying to achieve, especially in our business, is ethereal. It's emotion, it's brand, it's whatever. Those things are hard to measure, but we can do that using applied neuroscience. Awesome. Can we switch on over? Can we have our, our neuro volunteer come on out? All right, let's give him a round of applause. Hey, Hi, how's it going, Peter? It's so all right. Come, come on over here. So when you come to Singularity University, sometimes this happens. All right, so real quick, what I want to just say is explain, like, this is a real-time demo. Obviously, this is a massive amount of data in a short period of time. Massive. Massive, massive. And you can see here that he really does care about what he's talking about. Um, what for, I think we're a little bit too far away from the computer, but what you, it's okay. What, what, we could, what we can see, uh oh, what you could see is that in, re, in real time, you can see moment by moment distraction, anxiety, cognition, and we're back. Cognition and motivation. And because you're able to do that, you're able to do some pretty incredible things in real time and take the things that feel mystical and impossible to understand and then bring them back into life. And so, Peter, how does it feel? Uh, I feel a little exposed here. I think people are looking inside my head, and it's, oh. um, it's odd. Well we, well, we are. We are, actually. Um, David, can you bring out the, uh, the extra little piece here? So we just so happen to have a Funko toy here. New, latest off, off, the, off the grid here, this is a... Oh, wow. Dwight Schrute. Whoa, from The Office. From The Office. So this is, this is Dwight, big time. Can I, can I keep this? Um, yes, you can. You can keep that. But so, I'd ask now. Yeah. so as you can see, what you can see in the moment, I think we're still a little bit too far away from the computer, actually. But what you could be able to see if we we're a little bit closer is the moment by moment, how he was feeling as he was opening it and closing it, and all the things that are attached there. But I have to say, can we switch back to the other? Peter, we, this is actually kind of a ruse. We're, you know how I said at the beginning, uh, we build uncommon products, which you saw with this uncommon learning. Uh, I mean, uncommon insights but we, and the applied neuroscience, but also we also build partnerships, too. So Peter, who are you really? I'm, when I'm not a guinea pig, I am the Dean of Innovation and Deputy Dean at INSEAD. That's right. So, we, so once again, come to in, come What here. am I doing here? What, what are we doing here, Peter? All right, so um, we're really, I'm really happy uh, to be here at the Global Summit to announce an exciting new partnership between Singularity, sort of your beloved um, group, network, organization that really leads on creating the future with exponential technologies, and INSEAD, the business school for the world. As you know, we've got campuses in Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and really in each of those regions, the leader in sort of deep research into management and in compelling and impactful programs around strategy and leadership. And what we want to do together is really team up to tackle what we see as the biggest challenge facing leaders today, which is how do you build, on the one hand, the understanding, the openness to, do ne to new technologies, and on the other hand, how do you go back and build responsible and effective strategic responses, right? So how do you actually go and create compelling value propositions that are going to work in the market and for society and to build the organizations that can execute on them? And this is really what we want to work on. We'll be doing applied research together and immediately translating that into impactful and practical programs. Um, why we're working together, I really think it is an uncommon partnership. We both have excellent but very distinct faculties with different capabilities that we can blend together. And I think what really excites me is over the last few months as we worked on this, despite you know, the distinct and differences, there's a set of commonalities that's really just propelling this forward. I think both of our communities believe in the power of global networks and distinct um, diverse populations addressing problems. Both of our organizations are, of course, mission-focused. You guys set up from the beginning to tackle the world's biggest pro problems. 
in Seattle, if you don't know, we were basically set up with the belief that by doing business together, we could bring peace and prosperity first to Europe and now the world. We're deeply committed to making sure business is a force for good. And then I think finally, what most excited, we're both very entrepreneurial organizations. We believe in getting things done, trying, learning fast. And so already you can see we're announcing the first thing we're gonna do together. That's right. So the awesome Peter. Can we just give Peter a round of applause? That was awesome. Before I announce the, the big discreet thing, which you can see behind you and talk a little bit more about it just for a second, I mean, really, it's the doers that make it one way or the other, doing for good or doing for bad. And just the folks that are here together in this room, you're here because you care, not just about learning, but about doing. And that's what's so great about these uncommon partnerships. And definitely Peter and, and, and his team are incredible, and we're super, super excited. The first thing that we want to announce is we have this new series that we've we call The Future of X. And so because the world is changing so fast, what we're going to do is bring our respective groups together to constantly both do really, really uh, high, high level of research, but then also bring uh, the leading practitioners and faculty together to be able to bring these things together. In the first one we're going to do is, is going to be the future of AI, and it'll be the, the week of January 26th here in the Bay Area, um, with, with the content being both from, from INSEAD and from Singularity as well. I think it's huge. Like when Peter Diametis kicked off the conference, he talked about accelerating change. I yeah. think there's no area where we're seeing more acceleration than in AI. That ecosystem is sort of out of control from big techs to startups, hardware, software. So it's really about understanding where the technology yeah. is going, but then how do you actually leverage it? How do you build an organization? Yes, you need data scientists, but that's only the tip of the iceberg of what it takes to build an organization that's AI ready. That's right. And it's not done, it's not discreet, right? So it's an ever evolving thing. So we're there once again to bring everybody that's on the forefront and the forethought so that we can continue to, to make this AI for good. So Colin and I are around, come up to us, yeah. give us your ideas, what should be in the program? What kind of great case studies with leading practice should we be tapping into it to inform the program? And again, if you have ideas for some of that Please. first great group of people to join us in the adventure, let us know. Yeah, and you can sign up here for more info. And uh, like I said, this is the first of many things we're going to be doing together. So thank you so much for your time and uh, enjoy day two. Thanks. Right. Thank you.